You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. Alright folks, welcome to another episode of Rod and Style Radio with your favorite couple, the custom couple. Today's episode is brought to us by who? Two Tones Paint. Oh, nice. Austin. Shout out to Austin. Yes. Um, on the phone today, since we decided we're going to do a little salute to rural car building, Bryce hit us up last week and said he needed to be on the show to talk about how y'all do things in Nebraska. What's going on, man? Not much, man. Yeah, I needed to to vent, if you will, because <laughs> it's, it's tough being a hot rod or a greaser or whatever you have you and the middle of nowhere when the culture is just few and far between. You know, I can't even imagine that because like we go through those spouts here in big city, San Antonio, where it's like few and far between. So yeah, I would imagine if you're in the middle of nowhere, how much harder it is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So, you know, I, I got into it. I mean, I, I dove headfirst into rockabilly when I was in the Marine Corps um, and I was on the East Coast. So, I mean, you've got like Philly, Winston-Salem, Charlotte, all those places along the East Coast are just awesome for the culture. Fast forward a few years, I got out and I moved back to my hometown of North Platte, Nebraska, which is like close to the Colorado border. And I'm like, man, I am, uh, I am Alice in Wonderland right now. <laughs> and uh yeah it was tough you know you, you had some guys that knew kind of what the culture is about everyone's heard of the stray cats and stuff and you know but mostly it was corvettes and jean shorts and white new balances and yeah it was, <laughs> it was tough that's like so, every uh, cars and coffee here i was gonna say there is no shortage of that here we see that oh a yeah lot. <laughs> you know and no disrespect to the old timers or the the muscle car guys, you know, everything's got its place, but you know, it just it's not the same. You guys know that. Oh, of course, no, and I I would imagine that it's like just it's more relevant here because it's like on a larger scale, mm-hmm. right? Like we see it a whole lot because there's just so many more people here. But you're still seeing the same things, you know, almost anywhere that you go. And when it comes to right. like being in the middle of nowhere, we've actually had several folks. Uh, that have come onto the show. Uh, one being a one, of, you know, a huge, you know, big time car builder, Ian Russell, and he's in the middle of nowhere. He's literally in the <laughs> desert, <laughs> right? Yeah, and uh, you know, luckily, I've, I've been a part of the drag strip zombies for a couple of years now, and uh, that's been awesome because it seems like you throw a dart at a map and you can call up a buddy and you've got a place to stay, you know. So that's been cool, but. I'm still a lone wolf. Uh, I'm in Lincoln, Nebraska now. It's a little bit bigger scene, a little bit closer to Kansas City, Omaha. But, you know, the scene just really didn't pop off in those areas. I was going like, to say, when I was traveling, I was when we first met, I went to Nebraska. And I remember calling calling you and telling you that I couldn't find anything to do out there. So I can only imagine how the car scene is out there because I was – calling him bored i was like i just i don't know what to do here there's nothing to do like i can't find anything because that was something i would always do everywhere i went i would try and look for like shows or go to events or anything that i could and that was one of the hardest ones that i couldn't find anything she couldn't even find right. them all i couldn't find them all yeah that was i was like come on i at least need to just walk around and i was like no i don't yeah, trust you're, it. <laughs> you, you probably weren't missing much let's just say that <laughs> Which, which, where did you go that you hit the the skating rink though? Because I remember you were skating around with a with a cross dress and skater for a little bit. Oh yeah, uh, I think that was in Lincoln, Nebraska. Because I originally was in Omaha, 
And then the last two days of my week, I was in Lincoln. Yeah, Sam's living right. crazy Because that's, that's when I brought you back that sweatshirt from that place. Oh, what was it called? I don't remember what it was called, but it was like one of those big plant places. It was like huge. It was like, I think 10 acres yeah. was their spot. And oh, they wow. were like, oh, you're going to have no service. I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. I'm going to, I'm a thousand, like literally over a thousand miles away from my husband. I'm like, hey, if you can't reach me, I'm not dead. It's, they say I have no service, <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah. Right. So, so where did you, uh, where did you grow up, Bryce? Uh, so I'm from that small town, North Platte out West. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And, me and my dad have been building muscle cars, you know, all the way up until, like I said, when I got in the Marine Corps and went through a nasty breakup and I bought this 55 Chevy, you know, American Graffiti and two link blacktop. I'd oh. seen those since I was a kid. So, yeah. you know, I got the 55 and then you, you know how it goes. You get a car, you meet other people, you meet other people. And, you know, I found Rockabilly. I'm like, whoa, this is, this is home. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, so yeah, I just I dove headfirst into it, and uh, here we are today. And how did you get in with the drag strip zombies? Is those are close friends of ours. We know like everybody out yeah, here. Yeah, we've had several of them on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, probably Johnny and Gina. And um, so I was up in Philly for a car show event, and I ran into Mark. He's one of the zombies out there, and. Uh, jersey pennsylvania area uh just became facebook friends you know hot robbers you know i had something in common and uh i got back to nebraska and i'm like yeah i really want to join a club but there's nothing around here so i hit him up i was like hey man wh- what's it take to get in he's like oh you just prospect for a little bit and you know there i got in so now as of right now i am the solo member of the nebraska chapter <laughs> which is pretty cool uh Definitely get a lot of questions and looks when I go out on the town wearing the the old club jacket, but it's all right. Um, yeah, you know, we were the uh, we were the only hooligans for a while in our area. And the hooligans are huge. And yeah, they're yeah. all over. And uh, but in our you know neck of the woods, we were the last one standing when we got a chapter here. So we we know how that goes. We we know how to yeah. how it is to kind of be in a club but not be in a club <laughs> at the same time. Going to shows and then it's like, where's your club? It's like I am the club. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at it. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, but it is cool. I'm I'm trying to make it out to Viva this year. Um, oh yeah, go out there years. and see see the guys out there. Go see Cody and them. I'm sure Cody will make it out. And, oh yeah, uh, Stephen, you know. right? Stephen Boggs. Mm-hmm. He, you will yep. probably come up from Arizona and come check you out. Cause, uh, yep. They had the most club entries last year. They got some kind of trophy last year at Viva. I forgot what it was. I think it was. I think, I think it was club entries, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, shout out to the, the drag strip zombies. It's always cool to have you We're going to see the them in, in a couple weeks at Invasion in Dallas. Yeah, yep. there'll be a bunch of them at Invasion. Uh, I'm so jealous. You guys got some of the best shows out there. <laughs> You know what? Texas has like some really good shows. I know a lot of people always want to try to make it for Roundup, uh, right. but I always encourage people to go to Invasion and go to Pistons and Paint because mm-hmm. like those mm-hmm. are two just really cool, really uh, you know just out there shows. Uh, it's like we live so close to Roundup, but we prefer to go to Invasion. And yeah, it's Pistons like driving an hour to Austin or four hours to Dallas. But it's and just we'd so, it's go to so fun. It's just so fun. Those shows are so big, and I don't know. I feel like since they're so close, that's why we've gotten spoiled, and we're like, eh, we can go another year. But like Invasion, we weren't able to go the last couple of years until last year. And, and then, then you go and win the damn pinup contest. Yeah, my first try. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I get to go past my crown this year, but yeah, oh yeah, that was nerve wracking. <laughs> didn't know, didn't know I was in the presence of royalty. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. She's got the crown and the heavy ass trophy to go with it. I went against girls yeah. who competed three or four times. I was like, oh crap! Now I really feel bad. <laughs> Better put up some dukes, fight off that title. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think what uh, we also had. Uh, uh, Justin Hussman on the show. He's yes. another zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Texas. Yep. 
Yeah, so, you know? yeah, man, I'm just naming off all the zombies we've All the had, zombies that you know, we've encountered. Super <laughs> yeah, yep. amazing we're, we're, folks that support this show. So Yeah, and that, that's the thing with them, you know, not knowing me, bringing me into the fold. Everyone's been super cool. So that that's pretty awesome. And, um, and doing it wrong, there's, there's clubs around here, too. Um, I just happened to get in with the zombies, you know, when I did and, you know, can't go back now so <laughs> it wouldn't be recommended that that's for no, sure no, no, no. <laughs> like i said it's it is there's a certain cool factor of being the one and only and be like that's right you know yeah. Right, I I still tell people I'm the only greasy shark in Texas. You so. are the only right? greasy shark in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know in uh, uh in Nebraska out there. Do y'all have any sharks? I haven't seen any. Yeah, it's kind of a like a Midwest, like Northeast Midwest uh, kind of uh, fraternity, I guess you would say, because it's not actually like a car club. It's several clubs that all got together and kind of is that where you had my lord yeah ill yeah when i was up in uh, illinois uh getting that malort going on Ugh. yeah yeah you ever go through chicago punch somebody there for creating malort okay <laughs> i've got to go there i've got to go there for work here pretty soon so there you go yeah to do list uh, I'm sure they'll tell you it's wonderful stuff. It is, right. it is the worst stuff you've ever tried in your life. So you said you're building a 50, uh, 55 right now. Are, are, are you building it or is it, uh, is it a completed project? It's always in the process of getting built. Oh, I know uh, that. <laughs> I went full on gasser with it. Um, I love it. I'm kind of looking for something to do long haul cruises with, you know, I, I I would love to drive out to Viva. I think I'm like 18 hours away from where I'm at now. Um, but yeah, the the 55 is just something that's going to stay with me. Yeah. Now, are you uh, are you running into a lot of problems finding parts, or is it you know is it getting easier now that 2022 has brought us things like Facebook Marketplace and you know a lot of places that you're able to order things from? So I was actually pretty fortunate. A lot of my stuff, um, my dad had stockpiled around like the big block, the four speed, um, that stuff he'd, he'd been hoarding since the seventies, you know? Yeah. Um, car specific stuff. I haven't really had to buy anything the last couple of years. I mean, it's, it's flat black primer. It's got some rust. I've welded some panels on it and didn't bother putting Bondo on it. It's just, you know, you go out, tear up the town if you get it dirty, who cares? You know? <laughs> right? It's meant to be driven. Absolutely. Right. Oh, yeah. And there was a time where I drove the absolute piss out of that car. And that's probably why it's giving me the hiccups it is right now. So. Yeah, I would. I would venture to say that you know the uh, in this day and age, car building is probably getting to be more you know a lot easier with a lot of the aftermarket stuff that's available. Uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, you're, we're running out of a lot of the, you know, the nostalgia of, you know, finding the, you know, original parts and things like that. So, yeah, being right. in the middle of nowhere though, your, your problem probably isn't so much, uh, finding things to, you know, to build your car with it's finding places to take your car once it's built. True. And you know, being the Midwest, a lot of the cars that we're into didn't make it out here. I mean, you think back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, most everybody was driving a pickup truck or a grain truck or, you know, so. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of, you know, a lot of your cars, like I said, you know, the Buicks, the Impalas, the Biscaynes, all that, they just, yeah, you know, we had a few grandmas in town that drove them, but. There's just a lot of pickups around here, which yeah. is cool, you know, but not my thing. Yeah, and yeah, I've gone through so many cars and trucks, and yeah, I I, I didn't even think about that. You know, the, the Midwest. I mean, you're talking about a lot of farming country. A lot mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. people didn't really have a use for a car. 
you know? No. You it, know. Unless um, you're in the big city, but... I was going to say, still. having a car would be a luxury there, because yeah. everyone's oh, right. like, no, yeah. we, we need the truck so we can do work and make money. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, so finding those, you know, uh, diamonds in the rough, if you will, is, is definitely challenging, especially the further out west you go in the state. You know, around Lincoln and Omaha, those, are, those have been populated cities for a long time, but... Yeah, it's been it's been challenging, that's for sure. Yeah, I always run into that problem too, and and I know Sam loves the fact that I always fall in love with cars that are at least twenty hours away from me. At a minimum, <laughs> at a minimum, you right? choose the cars that are f- the farthest. But you know what? I can't complain because I did the same exact <laughs> shit. It's like there's so right? many around us, but there wasn't the one that I wanted. I was like, no, I want that one. It's like, well, we found that. No, I don't want that. I want that one. I the want- one you kind of. Justify internally. You're like, yeah, it's just 20 hours. I mean, I'm like, it could be worse. I was like, oh no, we have done that. We we are slow. We are actually going to do that in October. We're going to be driving all the way to uh, Evansville, Indiana, for Evil Shindig, and that's a 16 hour drive with no stops. And we did that already once and then when we went to Beatersville. we went to Beatersville, and then coming right. back i was like oh i can drive us and i drove 10 straight hours and i was like okay you you finish the rest i can't finish the last five. <laughs> oh yeah she's a trooper when it comes to to driving now co-pilot not not so much oh i'm terrible i i get an f <laughs> i'm asleep i'm eating oh yeah i'm not paying attention to whatever he's doing i'm like oh, i'm good i'm gonna take a nap I- I pass out, and I if I'm not passed out, I'm a music snob. Nope, we're not listening to this. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Damn right. That is me right there. And he's like, oh, can I listen to this? Nope. Nope, absolutely nope. not. It's going to be my musical this whole ride. <laughs> so, Bryce, awesome. man, do you, you, got, uh, you got family out there that, that, you, uh, that you're living with? Are you living on your own? What do you do, man? No. Uh, so, my little brother lives with me. Um, trying to get him trying to find him a car right now so I can bring him into the fold. Oh, that'd be uh, great. Yeah, he's a motorcycle kid, but trying to get him into hot rods, and he's getting there. Um, I think the other day he came home from work, and he's like, have you ever heard of this band called The Cramps? Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. God. I like, dropped what I was doing. I was like, of course I have. Like, what are you talking about? You know, so it's pretty cool to see the kid brother, you know, like getting into the same stuff that I am. Oh my god! I'll be so excited to show him my car when it's done. Yeah, right. her car is actually named Lux. Yeah, I named him Lux, and it's gonna. Oh be, no shit! That's cool. Yeah, it's gonna be. Uh, everybody's heard it like a thousand times, but yeah, I love it. I'm so excited about it. So I named my Buick Lux, and then it's gonna be entirely like cramps themed. So the inside's gonna mm-hmm. be red, and uh, it's gonna be red leopard, and then on the back of it, I'm gonna get one of our friends to pinstripe in, and it's gonna say "All women are bad." Nice. Since I'm a, since you know I'm one of the women car owners, that's what I'm gonna put on the back of it. But yeah, I'm gonna put like little like cramps theme things inside the car because I just I love that band. For sure, me too. You know, and actually, surprisingly, not to get off topic, but the music scenes out here is, is pretty good. Um, last few months, I've seen the Meteors, Necromantics, and Southern Culture on the Skids. Oh, Southern Culture is a wonderful, wonderful band. Yeah, I was impressed. <laughs> so at least I've got the music going for me. That's pretty cool. But um, yeah, some good bands come through Lincoln. For sure. Now I don't want to. I don't want to call you out on your age, but uh, were you? Are you old enough that you have seen the Cramps live? No. So no shame. I'm thirty. I know I'm kind of a young buck in this in this world. <laughs> hey, it's I'm fine. Only, I'm only eight years ahead of you. I'm a, I'm <laughs> uh, I'm f- how many years? You're four years I'm behind f- him. I'm four years behind you. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, Sam's no. the youngest. I'm the young, uh, Yeah, everywhere we go, I'm the youngest. But slowly, I'm becoming one of the, not older ones, but the, I'm not the youngest anymore. I'm becoming the second right. youngest. So I'm like, I'm moving up. <laughs> finally. You're becoming the seasoned vet. I got gotcha. you. Finally. Gotcha. Everywhere. Yeah. They're like, how old are you? I was like, don't ask. Don't ask. We don't ask yeah. that question. We, we don't play that game. We don't play that. It's not because I think it's not because I'm old. It's because I'm the youngest one every time. And the braces right. don't help. So... Yeah, I kind of no, screwed really. myself. Yeah, I screwed myself on that one. <laughs> I love. I got those out of the way in middle school. So I did not. 
<laughs> this is like Sam's like what third third time trying braces. Yes, because I was an asshole and I didn't want them. And then I decided to do Invisalign like a dumbass when it first came out. And I was like, oh, this is easy. And I never wore them. So I was like, yeah. maybe I'll have more discipline knowing that it's my money that I have to spend. <laughs> you know, it's like when you pay for yourself to go to college. It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I might want to actually study this time. <laughs> right. Yeah, I hear you. That was the only way I made it through school, and I, you know, I dropped out after my third semester, and then like when I had to go back like ten years later, I was like, I actually have to do this now because I'm footing this bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm the, I mean, I'm like total old man when it comes to the house. You know, if lights are on and no one's in that room, be like, Who's, who keeps the lights on around here? <laughs> you know, it's like yep. when you're paying your bills, you're like, okay, now I'm conscious. Of money i spend <laughs> oh yeah no, and i think that that makes people appreciate things a lot more is when they have to actually foot that bill you're the one who calls For me sure. a penguin though because i keep my house at 68 and he's like who's gonna pay i was like i'm gonna pay i don't care i'll pay the 300 dollars bill i want my cold ass house that's the one thing that she will not like i won't go budge back on. on i won't budge on i will i will budget everything else but when it comes to my ac it better be an igloo <laughs> yeah oh especially in texas I mean, oh yeah it's too damn on. hot it's too damn hot yeah here. Yeah, so yeah, it you know we were talking music, man. Uh, culture just all the way around is like what our show is pretty much based on. Like we talk a lot about cars, and we're involved with a lot of you know folks that are in the car scenes. But at the same time, we're all in in this giant culture of you know just underground custom lowbrow art. Mm -hmm. You know we've you know oh, we've had, sure. we've had the gamut of like people on the show that are you know from people who are you know designers you know both in cars and in clothing yeah mm -hmm. you know we've we've talked to you know just all the whole spectrum and that's and plus the music is a lot of is i feel like the music is what sets the tone like whatever bands they have playing sets the tone for a lot of the shows because you know when we were in Beatersville, we got to see uh, the beat creeps who we've never heard of and you know he gets up on stage and he's singing the cramps and it's like damn this is cool like where like right and it's just those things it's like that's what sets the tone of like how you feel at a show so i For like sure. i like that fact of knowing that there's live music and you can hear it everywhere and it's like damn this is really good like who's this and right i don't know i kind of like that aspect like i love talking about cars but man like i think about everything else that goes into it you know all the pinstripers yeah, it, we've talked to all the artists all the fabricators everything and that's kind of the fun or you know people like you that you have you love the culture and you know even though it's not surrounding you you're still doing it yeah i'm still i mean 100 percent into it um i think one of the best shows i went to on the east coast uh winston-salem north carolina it's called heavy rebel weekender Ooh. Like three days, uh, car show, bands. Uh, I think Paps uh, sponsors it. Good old and Paps it, Blue Ribbon. Oh, yeah. As I drink my old Milwaukee right now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to quit drinking beer, so uh, I, I stick to Tito's Vodka if they'll ever sponsor our show. Well, you get the name out there enough for sure. But, uh, yeah, that, that show was, like, the perfect, and I'm sure there's better shows out there, but that was, like, the perfect mix of just everything everyone's into. There's vendors, clothing, you know, just oddities, stuff like that. And it was just a good weekend of everything that we're into, you know, so it was, it's, a, it's a good time for sure. And what was it called again? Heavy Rebel Weekender. Heavy Rebel Weekender. We'll have to look that one yeah. up for sure. We'll for give sure. them some shout outs on the pages. Yeah, Winston Salem, North Carolina. That sounds like a good old place to buy a pack of smokes. <laughs> it was uh let's just say it was a lot of beer gets consumed there. <laughs> awesome. Oh man. So what do you what have you got com uh coming up with, you know, you know, you said you want to make it out to Viva. Is there any other shows that you've got on the radar? Uh, not right now. I mean, Viva, I've always wanted to make it to, a, oh, what's the one at Austin's Beach Shop? Um, don't well, they have a big show every year? 
Well, Austin Speed Shop does uh, one of the big uh, after parties for Lone Star Roundup. Lone Star. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Always want to make it out to Lone Star. Um, there's one in Tennessee, too. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but... Oh, uh, that's the Rockabilly Weekender one that we were supposed to go to. Uh, Nashville, Nashville Boogie. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's Nashville the one we want to go to. Yeah, that one That one looked like a lot of fun. We were supposed to make it out to it. But So I, yeah, did, look, you know, just, I did look up. I'm sorry to interrupt. I did look it up. The, nope. heavy, the Heavy Rebel Weekender. They're actually trying to find dates for 2023. They haven't had one since 2020. Oh. Right. Yeah, they, they took a few years hiatus. Um but it's it's like right down in downtown. Um, it's in an old bank actually, and if I remember correctly, the old bank vaults on every level, that's where the bands play. Oh, that's yeah, cool. It's just it's a it's a super cool old brick building, and yeah, it's just it's a good time. Oh, that does sound like a good time. Maybe by 2023, we'll actually have a way to take one of our cars out to the show. I know. We still haven't done that. I've only ventured out an hour and a half away from home <laughs> in the Buick. And he did great. He did really good. He's And yes, I, talked, I talk about him like he's a real person. Um, oh, hey. I he do the same thing. He doesn't like men. He's hurt every single man that's ever sat in my car. <laughs> Oh yes, he's he's torn them up. He's blown rusted air at them. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> yep. They don't believe me. They're like, "Oh, just shut up." I'm like, "No, don't talk to him that way. You're gonna piss him off." Like, yeah. don't. Right. Do not talk rough to this car. He does not respond well. Lux is the Christine. Hey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the Christine mod- was a documentary. It wasn't a. It wasn't a movie. It was a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> These are facts. Exactly. Someone in real life had that happen. They're like, we need to just cover up the name because they can't find out. I talked about them. <laughs> <laughs> right. One of my favorite things about that book is how it, the first, uh, how it starts, like on the very first page. Uh, this is not a book about a car. This is a love story yeah yeah i I absolutely christine was like one of our favorite books Mm -hmm. and then i showed sam the movie after she read through the book and and i was so pissed (laughs) i was so so mad mad. (laughs) i was like they missed so many key points to that like you don't people don't understand why this happened and next one oh yeah i got on a whole binge about it i was so mad oh yeah it uh i need to i need to go back and read that book actually it's been a while Yes, absolutely. I recommend Kudos that to you one. Guys. Yeah. But St- uh, Stephen King is like he's a a very, you know, obviously he's a great writer, but mm-hmm. he he is very thorough when mm-hmm. it comes to, you know, the details that he goes in. Like he wrote another book uh called From a Buick 8 and he mm-hmm. was so thorough about the the car in that book as well. And the the book didn't even really have to do with the car. No, but uh, the way he described yeah, the he cars, just described everything in it like like to a T. That because it was like a, you know the car was from another dimension and it didn't look quite right. And he was pointing out all of the things about like the little specifics about the car that weren't correct about it. It was just really cool. Like the dude is very thorough in his writing. Well, and I mean, there's a reason why he's. I mean thousands and thousands of books you know just i mean i think he's one of the top writers of you know today age so absolutely yeah Yeah. shout out to stephen king you can also sponsor this podcast (laughs) 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 oh that would be great we get called up to in maine i think he's he lives in maine we'll we'll get called up there and go be spooky for a weekend oh my god no (laughs) i'm good (laughs) I don't know. I mean, Connecticut, Maine in the fall. That sounds like a pretty good time, you know. You know what? Yeah, I think Massachusetts. Y'all can have fun then, because they have fucking rats over there, and they're not. Oh little. yeah, we went to New York. That shit's disgusting. <laughs> they don't have. Just... Oh, that's New York. Come on. <laughs> New York's all right if you like saxophones, but yeah, no. Uh, we were walking down the street in New York, and she's like, oh, look, we just feel like we're just in the city. And I was like, I looked down, and I was like, yeah, because there's a big old rat running down the street. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh. Yeah, it was disgusting. I saw, I, I lived the New York life. I saw a dead rat, and then I saw a live rat. And the dead rat committed suicide and fell off a fucking building. Yeah, he fell right in front of us and just went feet up. Yeah, splat. Oh. I was like, oh. I was like, well, me too, buddy. Me too. I don't want to be yep. here either. <laughs> 
I haven't made it out to New York City yet. I wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I ever will. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's not. It's it's not all. It's well. I don't know. Personally, for me, it wasn't all it's right. cracked well, up to be. We won't do it alone again. No. Yeah, we we went up there for almost a week and it, by ourselves. So we knew what we were there to see, but at the same time, we weren't there with anybody that could show us anything beyond that. Uh, they lost that me. Helps. They lost me at. Uh, they didn't have sweet tea. Yeah, they do not have sweet tea. Carmines, shout out to Carmines. They're the only ones that they're gave the us sweet tea. They're the only ones that made me sweet tea after they heard how I talked. And they're like, you want sweet tea, don't you? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, it was you know, and that And that's something I brought back. Oh, man, sweet tea, barbecue. You know, that's something I brought back to Nebraska, you know, from North Carolina. I know we're going to have that discussion of Texas barbecue, better North Carolina barbecue. But anyways, but they yeah. all beat Kansas. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Shout out to all they, all, they, they all beat Kentucky because Kentucky's was terrible when I went out. Oh, sorry, sorry to everybody all out of there our too. Friends in Kansas <laughs> They're gonna be so pissed that I now. said that now. But <laughs> we'll agree to disagree of who has the better barbecue. But you know, yeah, yeah. I, I think we can. Discussion for now. Yes, we can all agree that we don't. Like it. This is barbecue. <laughs> It'll be a you know th- you know this crazy random ass custom culture podcast just started a whole meat war. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. <laughs> meat war twenty 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 two. Man glitter everywhere. Oh god. Oh man, you guys are awesome. <laughs> oh, so sweet meat, right? Ugh. Sweet Why meat. are you continuing this? <laughs> this is bad. I just I always give Sam crap about it because when she went to Kansas, she went to a barbecue place and they had like everyone was telling barbecue me all how over how good it was all over it. They're like, this is gonna be so good, and I was on the phone with you. I was like, I'm about to try it, and I was like, I was like, oh, I don't like it, I don't like it. And then I got the sweet tea, and I was like, this isn't sweet either. I was like, I'm in hell. No. I want to go home. <laughs> So, in all fairness, Kansas City's got some pretty good joints that have been there, I mean, like, since the 30s. I think Arthur Bryant's, a couple other ones. And it's not bad, but... It's not uh, that there's something bad. About, there's <laughs> something about Texas brisket and sausage that I just, mm, chef's kiss. Yeah. That's literally what we had yesterday. Yeah, we would uh, shout out to Black's Barbecue. Black's Barbecue. You can also sponsor this podcast. Oh my god, I'd be so happy. Oh man, just sponsor us with a meal once a month. We would be um <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, but uh you know, I think also we grew up on this style of cooking as well. So where we're from, you know, you don't put sauce on anything. And no, there's it's an a lot insult. Of, yeah, there's a lot of uh places as you travel further north that they put sweet tasting barbecue sauce on everything and i just i never got into it so that's that's no. my that's my thing I, i'll i'll get off my soapbox about it <laughs> <laughs> now take comfort in the fact guys that there is one music uh hall here in town that serves lone star beer ooh and ooh. every time i go there i always got to have me one cuz yep. it's very few and far between yeah, I drank a lot of Lone Star beer in my, you know, teenage years and my twenties, uh, to the point that I went. I slowly migrated from you know the red cans to the blue cans to now I can't drink anything out of a can. It, <laughs> can't, yeah, no. I, you do it once in a while, once in a good bit when we're at a show and there's not liquor but beer. You have about one can, yeah. but that's your limit. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, I, I've gotten out of my beer drinking stages, but uh, yeah, Lone Star beer, Shiner Bach. That's those have always been the staples down here in South Texas. Yep. Always two classic Texas beers. Yep. Um, you said Marine Corps. Did you do any uh, world traveling? Yeah. So and that, oh shit, that's another thing. So I spent my first two years in Japan. Oh man. And I, I mean, I'm sure you guys know. The Japanese love the American rockabilly scene. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah. love everything 50s pop culture. We have a lot everything. of friends. We have a lot of friends that live over there, and unfortunately, we can't communicate with them, but they like our pictures, and they like our cars, and then we look at theirs. There's one group. I forgot what they're... I don't want to butcher it. I'm not even going to attempt it, but there's a car club over there that we're friends with, and man, some of the cars they have... Oh, my God. They're beautiful. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of them are better looking than some of the ones in the states i've seen you know? oh yeah no, there's some there's and, some uh, guys over there that are building mercuries just yeah. badass chopped painted mercuries and you're like that's a fifty thousand dollar car in the states i can't imagine what you're doing with one in japan i can't imagine how much you had to pay to get it over there yeah and then start building it you know what i'm saying yeah exactly uh, it's just wild but, yeah so i was stationed on okinawa which is a little island south of the mainland but, you know, same country. And uh, uh, there's like a shopping plaza down there. And I just, I walked in this random shop. And, I mean, it was just Rat Fink stuff and Lucky 13, uh, Levi's. I mean, everything all-encompassing of the the clothing of the culture was there. And I'm like, that's when I finally, I did a little bit of research, man, and like, I think Moon Eyes is they have a big show out in Tokyo every year. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's just it's huge out there, and it's just super cool. You never would have I never would have expected to see anything like that out there. You know, so it was it was pretty rad. Yeah, several years ago, I used to run a media company called Whistle and Wolf, and a buddy of mine went on vacation to Japan and he wore one of our shirts while he was there and he took a bunch of pictures in Japan wearing one of our shirts. It was really cool. But the, one of the coolest things was when he uh, got back from Japan, he bought me a uh, custom car magazine from Japan. It was called like Cruising something and it was mm -hmm. all in Japanese and uh, I still have the magazine to this day, but just really cool, you know, to see what they, you know, uh, like, I don't, I don't know if the idolized would, would not probably be the correct word, but like the things that they just like hold really dear uh, to the, the culture and like they go all out with some of their builds where it's like, man, there's there's people here that don't go that far with their cars. Right. Yeah. I mean, paint jobs and suspension and everything. It's, it's wild, but yeah. it, it's cool, you know, cause like, especially with the zombies, you know, we've got chapters in, I mean, Australia, Sweden, Germany, France, you know, and that's cool because it's closer to us, but to see it all the way in Japan, it's like, man, that just shows you, I don't know, just the power of the culture, I guess, for lack of better words. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Did you spend any time on a C-130? I did not. Okay, uh, good. Mostly on the ground. <laughs> uh, I got asked to jump out of a few helicopter uh, planes on helicopters, but uh, I firmly believe that man was not designed to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. So. <laughs> Most I Marines don't, don't apply that, that theory, right? They don't want to be jumping out of airplanes. <laughs> no, we're we're amphibious. We're not airborne. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. That's cool. I appreciate you being on the show, but uh, you know the Thanks the invitation is always open, man. If you ever want to come back and just talk cars with us, you know, you're more than welcome. For sure, for sure. I appreciate you guys. I've been watching a couple months now. Your guys' podcast, following along, and um, I think we I had an old. 60 Buick, I think you and me talked about doing a little swapping on at one time. And, um, yeah, it's just cool knowing got friends in different states. And if you ever pop up in there, you can hit them up, be like, hey, let's go grab a beer or something. Absolutely. So, is there any is folks that cool. you'd like to give a shout out to while you're here on the show? Obviously, from the Texas standpoint, Johnny Chop uh, and the Drag Strip Zombies, all of them in Texas across all of them across the world you guys you're awesome thank you and, uh that's all i that's all i got for now <laughs> <laughs> well like i said we absolutely appreciate you being on the show folks if you are listening to this on apple please go on there and give us a rating and review and if you're listening to us on spotify you can also leave a rating i don't know if any of the other uh 
platforms are allowing that yet. They don't. They don't because they're lame. <laughs> Go to Spotify Boo. so Spotify can uh, uh, sponsor this show for us or Boo. something. Moo. Uh, <laughs> That's but, an insider, Patty. He listens to it. Yeah, Patty's going to hear All right, folks. In all things custom, keep it cool. <laughs>